In this video, I'm going to create a beautiful planted aquarium that is home to a variety of stunning aquatic creatures. Be sure to stick around to the end, it's going to be a good one. Now let's get straight into it. I'll be using this small rimless aquarium. It's 22 litres and I'll put the measurements up on screen now. As for the lighting, I'm going to use this budget LED for now, but I'm waiting on an upgrade to arrive so I'll change it up later. I'll be using this 22 litre water box aquarium. It's not an expensive tank, yet it's super high quality. I'll do my best to mention all the different brands and products that I'll be using and leave links to them in the description. With that said, nothing is sponsored and I paid for everything myself. Now let's get started. Firstly, I've got a mesh bag filled with some crushed lava rock that I'm going to place at the back of the tank. This will help build up some height towards the back and mean that I don't have to use as much substrate. Talking about substrate, for this aquarium I'm going to use some Tropica Aqua Soil. I've used this substrate plenty of times in the past and it's always my go-to. With a fine layer in, I've quickly realised that I don't really need the lava rock in the back. I don't want the substrate extremely high and with it there, there's just not enough aqua soil to plant in. I'm sloping the substrate up towards the back corner and just by the shape of the slopes, you can probably guess what kind of scape I'm going for. I want to create a triangular aquascape with the main hardscape focus being this spiderwood root. I've already been experimenting with the scape off camera so I roughly know its placement. My choice of rock for this build is black lava rock. I think it will be a nice contrast to the spiderwood. I got the rock and wood for this build from Riverwood Aquatics, which is an aquascaping store here in the UK. It's just about the only place that I buy hardscape online from as they actually provide pictures to the wood that you're going to receive instead of just a random selection. I'm sure we've all fell victim to buying an intricate piece of wood online only to receive a straight stick. Here's the hardscape so far and I'm really happy with it. I'm going to add some more spiderwood branches later, but for now I need to join the wood to the rocks or it's going to float up. You probably guessed, but I'm going to do this using the super glue and tissue method. I'm placing some tissue in the contact points between the wood and rock and then soaking it in liquid type super glue. It dries in no time and forms a strong bond which is 100% aquarium safe. With the spiderwood locked down to the rocks, I'm now going to work on adding some more detail. These are some spiderwood branches from Superfish. I'm not sure if you can get them in the US, but they're extremely useful when adding more details to your hardscape. I'm experimenting with different pieces in different places, but trying my best to follow the natural shape of the wood. Ideally, I don't want them looking like individual branches and I want them to look as if they've been attached to the root all along. Once I'm happy with their placement, I'm going to go ahead and lock them down with some more super glue. Here's the final hardscape. I'm really happy with it and think it makes a great skeleton that can soon be brought to life with plants. With the hardscape complete, I'm now going to pour in some more aqua soil, mainly towards the back to build up some height. As you can see, I've also tapered it down with it being the highest in the back corner. Before going any further, I want to add a frosted background to the back of the tank. I'm cleaning off the glass and then giving it a good spray down so it's nice and wet. I'm then placing the white background onto the glass and using a flat edge to remove all the air bubbles and water. With all the water squidged out, I'm now taking a sharp blade and trimming off the excess. I have to say, this part is extremely satisfying. With the background in place, it really does frame in the scape and in my opinion, it looks a lot better. The new light has arrived, so it's time to upgrade. The light I've gone for is a Chihiro's B series. It only costs about £45, which is a decent price for a dimmable RGB light. The last thing I'm going to do before planting is give the entire tank a really good spray down. Now it's finally time to start getting some plants in. To begin with, I want a nice carpet of plants that stretches from the left side all the way throughout the foreground. I think the perfect choice for this is dwarf hairgrass. Obviously, I can't plant it straight in and it does need to be prepared first. Off camera, I've gone ahead and rinsed out all the nutrient-rich liquid that they're grown in. I can now tear them apart at the roots and start splitting them into smaller portions. It's pretty crazy how many individual plants you can get from a single tub. Now with some long tweezers, I'm going to start planting them down into the aqua soil. Don't be afraid to plant them relatively deep as this will really help prevent them from floating up. I have used all four tubs, but I could probably got away with just two if I spread them apart a little bit further. Next up, I want to plant some crypts. I've got some flamingo and some parva, which I'm going to use. 
I've gone ahead and removed all the rock wool and split them up into smaller plants. Now what I'm going to do next might seem crazy but I'm going to trim off all the leaves. The reason I'm doing this is that all the leaves on the crypts at the moment is their immersed growth. These immersed leaves almost always melt away inside the tank when they transition into their submersed growth. So instead of planting it with its leaves, waiting for them to melt and having to clean them up, it's much easier to start fresh and let the crypt get straight to growing in its aquatic form. As for the crypt flamingo, I want to plant it right here towards the center. Once established, this plant has beautiful pink leaves, which I think will add a really nice pop of color to the scape. It goes without saying that you shouldn't let the plants dry out, so I am giving them a good spray down every now and then. Next up, I'm gonna plant some stem plants in the background. Here's a quick tip to multiply your plants so you haven't got to buy so many. I'm just taking some scissors and trimming each plant in half. In no time at all, the bottom half will send out new shoots and the top half will grow its own root system. Doing this essentially gives you double the amount of plants. In case I haven't mentioned, this first stem plant going in is Rotala rotundifolia. Now they are really short at the moment, but give them some time and they'll be at the top of the tank. Next to the rotunda folia, I'm going to plant some hatra, which once mature should be a nice vibrant red. With the stem plants in, I think this tank would look a whole lot better with some epithytes growing on the wood. I've got some bucephalandra and some anubias, which I'm going to plant throughout the tank. As I said, these are epithytes and they should not be planted into the substrate. I'm planting them by wedging them in gaps and cracks throughout the scape. They'll pull their nutrients from the water column. In some areas, I'm using a small amount of superglue to attach them in place. This doesn't hurt the plant, but try not to use too much. Next up, I've got some trident fern, which I'm going to plant on the spiderwood. There were some small gaps that I could wedge them in to keep them in place, but if you needed to, you can always use a small amount of superglue as well. With the planting complete, I'm absolutely loving how this tank is looking. Before moving it over to the rack, I'm going to quickly install the CO2 diffuser. This is the tiny Chihiro CO2 diffuser and it should be perfect for a tank this size. Now I'm going to remove the light and carefully carry the tank to the rack behind me. I thought I'd save myself the trouble of trying to move it once there's water inside. Now the light can go back on followed by the filter. For the filtration I'm using this small canister filter made by Eden. It should be more than good enough for this small size tank. As for the outlets, I've decided to switch them out for some glass lily pipes. I really want to go for a super clean looking scape and I felt like the black inlet and outlet of the filter stood out a bit too much. With all the equipment installed, it's time to get the tank filled up. I'm placing in a piece of bubble wrap to help disperse the water and stop it from uprooting all the plants. The filter was relatively noisy at first, but after about 5 minutes, once all the air bubbles were out, it was pretty much silent. With everything set up, I'm now going to leave the tank to grow in for about 2 weeks. Two weeks have passed and I'm glad to say that the tank has started to establish nicely. All the plants are showing signs of new growth and the dwarf hair grass carpet is really starting to fill in well. The only place it's struggling is towards the front but I'm guessing this is because some of the light is being blocked by the spiderwood. As you may have noticed I have added some floating plants to the top to help suck up nutrients and prevent algae as well as some moss on the spiderwood branches. With that being said there is a bit of algae in here which is normal for a new tank but I'm hoping that it stays manageable. I'm going to add some beautiful fish later, but to kick off the stocking, I think some cherry shrimp are the perfect choice. I love their vibrant red colour and they should also help keep some algae at bay. Now before showing you the tank, 8 weeks later, why not drop a like and subscribe as videos like this really do take some time to make. Two months have passed and I'm glad to say that this nano aquarium is thriving. I've picked out two stunning fish to go in here, but before adding them, let's take a closer look around the tank. I will say that it hasn't been a completely smooth journey as there have been a few algae issues up to now. It was mostly growing in the hair grass, on the spiderwood and on some of the epithytes. I did sacrifice some of the booses and chopped off all the affected leaves. This one here was so badly affected that I removed every single leaf. The good news is that it's already grown new leaves that should be completely algae free. 
The cherry shrimp have been doing great to combat the algae, but you may have seen I have added a few Amano shrimp to help out. They're absolutely huge compared to the cherry shrimp and they do an amazing job at cleaning up the algae. The hair grass is still struggling towards the front, but as for the crypts, they're doing well. Considering I chopped off all their leaves, it's great to see all this new growth. The crypt flamingo isn't really pink at the moment, but I'm sure it'll get there with time. The stem plants at the back haven't quite reached the top yet, but they're starting to colour up really nicely. They have taken quite a while to grow this tall, but I'm guessing that's because they were so small when I planted them. They'll soon start peeking up behind the spiderwood, and I think that's when this scape's going to be looking its best. Now I think it's about time for the fish. I'm going to acclimate them for about half an hour before introducing them to the tank. I've chosen two of these stunning sparkling gouramis. They've been in the tank for a couple days at this point and they've settled in right away which is great to see. They seem super inquisitive and it's so calming and relaxing watching them explore the tank. What do you think of the fish choice? Would you have chose these or gone for something else? Let me know in the comments. I'm really happy with the outcome of this nano aquarium and it's been a joy to watch it grow and evolve. It's still got a lot of growing to do, but I think for the 10 weeks that it's been set up, it's started to establish really well. This is only the second aquarium I've made on the channel, so let me know if you've enjoyed it and I'll certainly make some more. As always, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, why not check out this one as I think you might enjoy it too.